Hello, so I'm just going to walk you through this device called Data Train. Um, so this device is a, a sampler a mangler. Uh, it does sample playback, a single voice, and then goes through some effects. And then all, a lot of these things can be modulated in this section here by this kind of uh, data value processing, which I'll go through how that works. Um, and the idea is that this kind of modulates the playback in such a way that it's, you can get very glitchy or mangly or rhythmic or also pretty sounds, um, depending how you set it up. So, um, yeah, um, I'll kind of start between the two sections to give you an idea how it works, and then I'll just go through each one more. Um, so this device works either as an audio effect or as like an instrument looper, and that's because you can either, like it is right now, record audio from the inputs into a buffer, or you can, or you could drop it in a sample and just have it loop with that sample. Um, so right now I have it set up so it just records in audio, but let's instead drop in a sample. So I'll, I'll drag and drop a sample. Okay, and um, so right now it's just like looping a little part of the sample, as you can see. And uh, you could say change the start position here. And it, it has a 250 millisecond loop size. Okay, so, and then um, basically you can see this next to a lot of these parameters, this parameter called mod. And this is just a, a way to um, modulate, apply modulation to each parameter. And you can see many of them have it. So right now they're all at zero, so nothing's really happening. Um, okay, where does the modulation come from? Well, it comes from this section here. And you can see here in the middle, um, in this small writing here, you can see a bunch of parameters. And so this is, uh, each, each of these sliders above the parameter is the modulation for that parameter. And you can see there's these little slider lines jumping around and that's the modulation value moving so you see this first one pause which is position the start position uh, it's jumping around so let's go back here and apply some of that modulation and you can see now the playhead starts jumping around and that's in correspondence with this little bar um, for example if I went to this mode now it's just going back between two spots. Um, and then if we go back here, we can see that now the start is just going back between two spots. So that's uh, kind of how this works. Uh, you don't understand the behavior of this yet, but that's kind of the idea. You apply these, mod these values um, and they modulate uh, the source that they say they do. Okay, so um, I think I'll go through how this, how these modulation values work now, and then I'll kind of go through the parameters of each section. So how the modulation works, which is the main part of this device, um, is, well, okay, let's start up here. So you have these multi-sliders, and these set, when I drag them, they set the initial modulation values. And let's modulate pitch. You can see pitch here is going from up to down. Let's modulate it so we can always hear kind of what's happening. So I just applied a little modulation. And you can see it's moving up and down with the sound. Okay, so how does this work? So like I said, these multi-sliders set the initial values. And then these little bars you see are the current value. Okay, so how do we get new values is the question. Um, we get new values with, with, I mean, with a few things, but mainly this kind of um, 
uh, it's not a matrix, but this kind of uh, this kind of <laughs> uh, tab uh, below. And uh, what happens is each frame, which is set, the rate is set here over here, rate. So that's the rate of each frame. So let me slow it down, and now you can see these change slower. Let me go faster, and these go faster. So this is the frame rate, and each frame. What happens is this value that you see goes through an operation selected here. And you can see on the right side, these are the different operations. You have multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, a re in, uh, negating the value and a random value and just passes, keep the same value. So these are the different operations that's set by the rows. And then each column just corresponds with the same parameter above it. So let's focus on pitch again. Right now, pitch, this is the value. And same with this, this is also pitch and it's, it's addition. So you can see addition is this row here and pitch is uh, selected to addition. Now let's change it to subtraction. Now it's going the opposite direction you can see. So let me switch between addition and subtraction. So here's subtraction and then here's addition. Right, so what we can determine hopefully is that with addition that this value every frame is adding to another value and with subtraction this value every frame is subtracting is subtracted by another value. And that's kind of how it works and if we do division it's every frame this value is divided by another value and now you can see it's moving around a bit less predictably and now it even got stuck somewhere um, okay so let's go by to addition so what is the other value it's adding to is the question because the pitch value is this bar value we see moving and so which value is it adding each frame and that value is determined over here in operand and right now, and here are the op options, left, right, op, self, index. So right now it's at left. And that means that the value it gets added by is the value to the left of it. So pitch is here and it's, so it's being added right now to the value to the left of it, which is this size value. And as you can see, this is positive, this is negative. So it's getting added by this negative value. And that's why it's going down instead of up. If we moved size to positive, now it's going to go up. And if we made size smaller, it's going to go up by less. And if we made size bigger, it's going to add a lot more. And it kind of, they kind of wrap around. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's left, and if we do right, then instead it's being added by the value to the right of it. Um, if we do op, it's added by the last Op means the other value that it's added or whatever by is the last one of the same operation. So for pitch, that one is over here, drive. You can see this is the whole row of addition. So there's only four. And the last value to go through the addition was drive over here at the end. So that means that now pitch is being added to drive. If I change drive to subtraction, now the last value to be added is over here, time. So now time, time value is being added to pitch. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, self means it's just added to itself. So now pitch is just adding to itself in the last frame to get the new value. And I can prove that by dividing, which will make it like kind of, yeah, become zero or, uh, or one uh, or zero. Um, cause it just goes down. And, um, or actually it should be one, but then it keeps getting added and wraps around the zero. That's how that works. Sorry. I didn't think about it. All right. And then index is, um, so if it's index, now all the operations are added to a specific index set here. And that index is the position. So now if we changed everything to addition, now everything is being added 
by this position value. And if I change that value, you can see it changes everything. And if I changed it to here, so, and then if I changed it to size, now all the values are being added by size. Hopefully that makes sense. And, and therefore, if I passed size and then set size to some small value, now they'll be constantly just added by a small value. So that's how this whole modulation thing works. And, over, and since we're still over here, so over here on the right side, this is just a history of past frames. And you can see since they're all just going up, there's just like this ramp up. If I change size to negative, they'll all go down. And now you can see they're all ramping the other direction. And right now, this doesn't do anything but show us a history. But what you can do is change the number of rows in the history. Let's go to something small like four. And then just loop it. And we'll see. Watch. And now it just loops the last four histories. If I change it to eight, it'll do the last eight. Which makes this device really good for rhythmic stuff because you could synchronize um, all these rates. Like I could sync the rate over here to say eighth notes and then go back to this section and turn the loop size to say eighth notes. And now things will loop pretty, sorry, now things will loop pretty in time. Yeah, and you can do lots of rhythmic stuff with this device. Okay, so hopefully, and, and sorry, uh, just to say, then you can change the looping direction. You have a few options. And then unloop to like continue just this whole progression. Okay, so that's how the whole modulation system works. Um, since I've already described most of it, I'll just describe the last things. So we already know rate, this controls the frame rate. Run just turns off the whole system. Um, randomize will randomize all these values. And snapshot will store a snapshot of all these values. Um, so let's press store and we'll save this whole thing. And then let's randomize everything. And then let's store that in number two. And now if I go back to one, we go back to our old system. And yeah, so you can make different snapshots to get completely different behaviors. Okay, glide gives you a little glide so you can smooth these things out. Um, maybe I'll do like a, a, a more dramatic thing, so glide is like more apparent. So yeah, you can see they're kind of gliding now. Um, and okay, and then the last thing in the section is this up here, reinit. So what reinit does is it just sets all these modulation values back to the original state. You see, when I press it, it goes back. You can also have an auto reinit that happens like every bar or, um, or you can do it in milliseconds. So yeah, you could do cool things, rhythmic things with that, like have things drop and go back up, whatever you think of. Okay, so that's this whole section, the data section. Now let's go to the playback section. Um, this section's pretty straightforward. Um, it's just a loop playback. So as we saw, there's like a, a start position. Every, of course, everything with a mod can be modulated by its set value here. Um, then there's the loop size, either in milliseconds or synchronized beats. Um, you can have the pitch. Transposition, modulate it, and when you modulate the pitch, you have a scale option. You could do chromatic, uh, major, minor, etc. If we did like And um, and then there's an option for Scala SCL files, so you can just drag and drop a Scala file here and get your own tuning system 
that's not on here. Um, playback direction. Uh, you can have the fade window. So let's make this. That's the fade window. Right now it's a triangle. You can move it to a ramp. This changes the attack. And then the slope. Make it more staccato. So peak changes the center of the window. Slope, the slope. You can open it up more. Too. Okay. Um, then we have overdrive. Uh, filters, pretty standard. I don't know if they're really being modulated much. Yeah. There we go. Um, delay. Uh, if you have glide off, then it's like a cross-fading delay line with no pitch changes on the delay time changes, but if you turn this on, then it's a single delay pair, and you'll get little pitch changes, and you can change the amount of gliding. Um, panning, gain, and then you can randomize all these values too, and you can save snapshots of these values too in this section, just like this section. And, um, and, uh, what I'm gonna say, okay, yeah, and then you have the dry and wet. Right now we dropped a sample so the dry doesn't do much, but if you use this more as an effect, which I'll just do now. Um, so instead, let's send this kalimba sound through. I'll turn this down, so here's the kalimba. Okay. And then, um, and then instead of this drop sample, I'm gonna lower the buffer size to something small and then just press record. Okay, and now it's just rapidly recording the buffer, and let's turn the wet back up. Yeah, so now it's more like an effect. There's audio coming into it, and that's what we hear with the dry volume, and then I'm recording that audio with this button, and this changes the buffer size, so it can be small, or it can be bigger. and you can make that synchronized. And you can press here, if you wanted to save the audio you recorded into here, you can manage that in this little pop-out menu. You can just save it so that it recalls, or you can um, do an auto-saving so it recalls every time you stop recording. But uh, be careful with that, because it'll take up a lot of memory if you do it a lot. Okay, so yeah, I think that describes the whole device. Um, you can, like I said, you can try the presets and all and, and get a lot of like mangly stuff, but also pretty stuff. Um, just depends how you set it up. Great. Well, I think that's everything. So enjoy.